Is it really that simple? Well, let's talk about it and let's find out. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future and let's dive right into it. And of course, like videos like these if you do enjoy them. Let's dive into the video because we have seen a historic sell side volume bar. Just notice if we compare this all the way back to early March, this is the highest sell side volume bar. So this is sell side exhaustion in the flesh. We're seeing extreme seller pressure as well as a downside wick occurring here. This seller exhaustion, whenever we see a sell side volume bar like this, it always precedes buy side pressure. And we're already seeing above average volume in the buy side. So it's very easy for buyers to step in and actually propel price towards the upside whenever we see sellers just sell themselves to death where they simply can't sell any longer. They exhaust themselves, enabling conditions easy for buyers to step in and prop price up towards the upside. Just notice how this is a above average volume bar, but very similar to this volume bar. And if we actually align these two here, you'll notice that this candle here, it had the same buy side volume, but it wasn't able to break this resistance. So the bulls really didn't have much strength on their buy side volume, whereas this buy side volume slightly higher has really produced a phenomenal buy side step in. We're seeing bargain buyers and premium buyers really step in and produce a very decent reaction. And we're already reclaiming this support here. We've managed to daily close at this support right over here. And we're even positioning for a daily close above this support as well. So already the bottom of this cluster here is being reclaimed as a support as we speak. Really important for a daily close to occur here because that would potentially see a retest of this level as support to enable further upside. But generally speaking, we are trying, Bitcoin is trying to build a cluster around these green levels here, just like before. And the whole goal here is to manage to reclaim 60,600. And we'll be talking about that in a lot more detail because that's exactly where the CME gap is. Notice 60,600 bang on in the middle of that CME gap. The CME gap, really interesting what's happened here. We had this CME gap between 58K to 61K form. We saw price top out. And then over the weekend, we saw such a crash that indeed we saw the beginning of a brand new CME gap develop between 62.5K and 59.5K. And so the fact of the matter is that we've seen this CME gap get filled. We saw this CME gap, this small one right over here, get filled quite nicely. This one as well. You can see so many CME gaps getting filled over the course of the past few months. And that just is a testament to the fact that there is a high likelihood that we will see price reverse towards the upside to fill also this CME gap. And if you think about CME gaps as vacuums in physics, there is a pull in vacuums. Vacuums pull things into it. And the larger the vacuum, the larger the pull. And that's why together with the odds skewing in the favor of this CME gap getting filled, and also because it's such a huge one, there is a high chance of Bitcoin potentially filling this in the future. And we're already seeing signs of this occurring. We're already seeing Bitcoin rebound quite nicely. But the interesting thing about this is that there is a new CME gap developing even around here. So if we were to see some sort of a dip occur in the short term, it would make total sense for Bitcoin to actually pull back into this region around 53.5 to 54.5K. It would make total sense to dip in here. CME gaps don't necessarily need to get filled. And also the small ones don't have that sort of pull that we simply see these CME gaps, these larger ones have. However, over the past few months, we've seen so many CME gaps get filled that it's very difficult to envision this one not getting filled also. So if a dip does occur, then that's fine. It would fill the CME gap. But the most important one really is this main one. And it's so important that this one gets filled because we really need to reclaim $60,600 as support going forward. And what's really positive, because over the past day or two, really the 24 hours in the newsletter, I spoke about how we needed to 
weekly candle close above 55,700. And even better would be a higher low. And this was a chart from yesterday, of course. Even better would be a higher low. And we're seeing both of these things take place. We've reclaimed 55,737. We've managed to form a higher low for the time being against this weekly level. So we're already reclaiming this key support here. So even though we've seen a drastic downside wick below here, we've also seen downside wicks below here as well. But this is quite a drastic one and we've already managed to reclaim this key level and even form a higher low. So this higher low is of course a sign in graphic form of premium buying behavior from the buyers. So it's really positive to see after such a flash crash to see premium buying and aggressive premium buying at that appear in the charts as well relative to these lows. So as long as this continues, this is going to be quite positive and we could be seeing this sort of structure emerge here. We do have a lower high series developing here. Could this be the very beginning of a new higher low series? That's something that I'm watching out for going forward. So far, so good, of course. But we also need to talk about this CME gap and really focus on it. Because if you think about Bitcoin's consolidation over the past almost five months, it's been consolidating between 60,600 and 71,500. And we've been seeing upside deviations beyond the range high of this reaccumulation range, essentially. But we've been seeing even stronger downside deviations below this uh, reaccumulation range. And notice how we've been forming CME gaps around the range low support here. So that's no coincidence that we tend to form CME gaps around a crucial support that needs to be held for Bitcoin. So just notice how below this reaccumulation range low, this is where we see these downside deviations. And as long as we recover from these deviations, just notice how we recovered from this deviation back into the range. And it's possible we'll do the same. Also filling the CME gap in the process, it would be really important to fill this CME gap for price to reclaim this range and continue its consolidation. Because historically, after the halving, we tend to see up to 150 to 160 days of consolidation in the reaccumulation range. We are already seeing a consolidation pattern here of course, not without downside deviations and also upside deviations. But as long as these deviations are recovered from, that's the most important thing. And reclaiming 60,600 would mean that Bitcoin would need to fill this CME gap. It has filled all of these CME gaps over the past several months. So why shouldn't it reclaim and revisit and fill this CME gap as well, just in time for the weekly close? I'm not necessarily waiting for a weekly close above here this week. I'm giving it a bit more time. Even later next week would be a good time to fill the CME gap and weekly close above here. So I'm giving it two weeks for Bitcoin to fill and reclaim this 60,600 level as a support. And as long as it does that, we're back to consolidation within this reaccumulation range and any sort of downside deviations will simply remain as bargain buying opportunities. Thank you so much for watching this video. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Like this video if you enjoy content like this going forward. And if you'd like me to come back on YouTube a bit more frequently, it's all in your hands. Like and subscribe and I'll be back. Speak to you soon.